Hello everybody and welcome to feature card coverage here at the 2023 Polecat World Championships. My name is Corey and I am pleased to be joined by Harper Alexander, CEO and founder of the Polecat World Championships here at the Pocahontas headquarters in the slum set of San Francisco. Harper, how you doing? I'm doing great, Corey, and thank you for making the trip over here to HQ. Uh, glad to have you, glad to have these videos. Huge thanks, obviously, to Gatekeeper and all the sponsors and all the players. You know, it's been a dream here to see this thing grow and uh, glad to do this commentary today. So, just want to welcome everybody through some uh, little drizzle this morning to Golden Gate Park for the fifth annual Polecat World Championships. This is the third and final day of the fifth annual. Yep, this thing started with 10 players and then 40 something and then 60 something and then last year like 260 and now this year we'll have another 220, 230 and uh, really, really thankful and honored to have some pros, some touring pros come and play and some local legends come and play also. Uh, first on the tee, defending co-champion and also co-course record holder, Nick Hansen. Well said there, Harper. Appreciate you taking the time to set up the whole event. But uh, yes, Handsome Harper, that's what we call him here at the club. But Nick Hansen, uh, staff member all year long for Gatekeeper, uh, did win it last year, co-champion. Co Excited to see what he does this year on the Golden Gate track. Pretty good, pretty good start. Nick is a sneaky, amazingly good player. Juliana was really, truly the first touring pro to get behind this, and I'm super, super grateful. Uh, Five-time disc golf world champ, two-time freestyle champ, four-time all-around champ, one of the best disc throwers of all time. Juliana Corver. And you mentioned accolades for days, largely frisbee related, so it'll be interesting to see her throwing a frisbee-like disc. I know she has one in the bag during the year. Doesn't throw a ton, but we'll see if that's been paying off. So smooth. <laughs> She's so good. I mean, that is not easy, uh, no matter who you are. Derek Phelan, we're letting him play in this event, even though he lives in the Richmond. And you all know Derek. Some insider SF gags here. Pull cat off the tee. Yeah, far less uh, announcements for Derek, but uh, fan favorite, local legend, and, and he's got game. Great throw. I love Derek. Let's see him ball out today. Fourth on the tee, James Proctor, one of the prettiest backhand throwers on earth, one of the top five players in the world right now, and also SF Disc Golf Club number one tag holder. <laughs> So hate to hear it, actually does not have the tag anymore. Yours truly does have that, but James, good guy, great player. Excited to see him slay it up on we here. We got it back from James. Oh boy, a little left, a little left for the king, but he's a good putter too. not least, Masters Cup champion from yesterday. Three tournament wins already this year and eight podiums. Second highest rated female player on earth, Owen Scoggins. Own Scoggins, love it. She's uh, maybe my favorite disc golf player to spend any amount of time with. She's a treat, and uh, just having her out here felt very special. Yeah, she's the best. Oh, I mean, look at this card. Like, you got Juliana, you got Nick. Then toward the end of the card, James and Own. I mean, great card. Yeah, heavy hitters. We're hit, playing here uh, hole one A position, which I think is a great starting hole for the Polecat World Championships. It's straight. It's a little uphill, but. Really a litmus test for how you're going to be throwing the disc today. Totally. Derek nearly runs that in from 60 feet. James here from probably about 50. Not even close. James, you're better than that. But again, Polecat, incredibly strange disc to be putting with. Oh, Juliana. Especially if you're the push putter type in general. Spin putting kind of translates, but gosh, it's tough to push that thing in there. Yeah, it's dead straight. You know, you know that. You can just aim at the center and it's more or less going to stay on it. Uh, but yeah, this is a good starting hole because if you're a big thrower, you can get the two. Um, but it's a test. You know, it's uphill. It's hard to throw it that far. Golden Gate in general, I feel like, is a great Polecat World Championships home course. Uh, you know, not overwhelming distance. Also, not overwhelming technicality. Uh, you know, it kind of gets the rap of being one of the more wooded courses in, in, in our general area, but still room to manage and a lot of good flight paths to bend that thing around on. 
totally agreed. You know, here Owen's going to tap in a par. Uh, it is wooded, obviously, but it's also, you know, it's gettable. It's not crazy tight lines except for one or two holes. And I think it's, you know, it's, as you said, perfect for the polecat because you can get so many twos and threes out here. And you really should if you're, if you're good at throwing and understand landing zones. Oh, one, not too bad. Couple of birdies uh, for the card there. One down, uh, or I guess a single birdie for Nick Hansen. Hole two is going to play to the C position. That's going to be off of that left side. You see that beautiful hyzer uh, just dropping in there. It's a hyzer shot traditionally, but with the pole cat, it can be tough to maintain that hyzer angle the whole way. Yeah, it's good that this one falls early in the round. Juliana more or less perfect there, probably about 12 feet. It's good that this one, this hole comes early in the round where the, the new polecat will actually still fade left. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's the constant battle. The, the, the flight of the disc literally changes throughout the round as Derek puts it perfectly. Derek pimps that line there to about 10 feet. Proctor looking like he's got the feel a little bit dialed. Is that, uh, ooh, not far off the ace. Polka Wocha ace is that would be legend. Yeah, I don't think we have any yet in five years, but they're out there, you know, on hole one, two, nine. They're out there. Somebody will get one. Oh, now, pretty common spot if you're playing the course regularly, just not quite able to get it over the leaves or over those uh, trees there. Lawns. Oh, great catch by the basket and a signature own putt. I love it. The flutter putt translates, man, whether it's the whatever she's putting with JKs traditionally or these uh, pole cats. Looking good. What a putter. So Own has opted for the 2023 G-Star run. You'll notice that a variety of plastics these players are going to be playing with. Ah, Nick. Yeah, the G-Star was a huge innovation or, or re-innovation from Innova this year. They did a huge run of G-Stars, which they hadn't done in years and years, and they feel amazing. Own's gone with a the purple there. So it should be noted, you get one pole cat for the entire round. It's not like you get a backpack full of them that you're cycling in and out. Uh, you know, whatever disc you're putting with, you're driving with it. If you hit a tree and taco it, you know, good luck. You just got to finish with it. So a plastic choice is something to consider, especially, um, you know, just about maintaining flight throughout the whole round. Yeah, this is a thinking person's event. And, uh, you know... If you're, you got to know your yourself, your arm, your course, your plastics. You know, Juliana's playing, I believe, with a DX. I think Derek and Nick and Proctor are playing with Halos. And then, yeah, the G-Star for own stick. Oh. So something to note, that walking path to the right side of your frame there is going to be out of bounds along the next three holes. So, you know, Polecats love to draw left to right, OB on the right means this is a, a bit of a scary shot here. Yeah, I mean, that's offline, but Derek knows his course here, and he knows he's not getting the two. But speaking of getting the two, Proctor going this. inside route? I like it with the pole cat, And though. the ground play shifting to the right. He's about 16 <laughs> feet short. Oh, man. Awesome throw. I mean, that is a driver for humans and probably a mid-range in real life for James. Be nice, be nice. Love the way Own throws with this disc. You get such good spin on it. Yeah, that's a smart play there because it's gonna turn. It's that same same attempt as Proctor, yep. but you can see. I mean, Nick is a fantastic player, legitimate open player, can compete on tour, but Proctor's just on another level. Oh, Derek could have got up and down there for the par, which was what he was playing for. Own's gonna probably do that here. Oh yeah. Good touch. You can really count on that left to right finish. Uh, you know, it's really about committing with the polecat, though. If you leave it a little bit on angle either way, it's going to fall out left or right. Yeah, I mean, it's such a cliche in disc golf world, but it will hold any line you put on it. <laughs> put it on. Very true. Very true. Is this the alien? Oh, no, no. Sorry. Polecat. <laughs> Ooh, okay, that's two in a row he's missed, just barely left. I like that little the spin he's getting on. I think that's the way to go. You shouldn't be, like, dunking him up off the right. Proctor. Clinical. I mean, we're a little bit spoiled because we play with James a lot. We're used to seeing crazy stuff birdie from him, but that is a ludicrous birdie with a uh, basically a tap-in pole cat shot. 
Hole three, four, five, six, and seven, you know, in general, five, six, seven, murderer's row, but include three in that. The OB, four, there's gonna, you're about to see trees everywhere. Three, four, five, six, seven is really like the dangerous portion of this course for the most part. Yeah, normal humans want to go all threes through there. You know, maybe get a birdie on four if you can thread the line, but uh, James is now, what, a birdie on two and three? Yep. Yeah. Owen plays the hole perfectly. That's how, you know, a normal person would play it. Throw it out there, 250, mm -hmm. another upshot, 100, tap in. Yeah, you said this tournament, really the thinking man's tournament or women's tournament, but it, it kind of is true. You know, you're playing a totally different brand of golf, you know. For the most of us, we have no opportunity to birdie maybe 12 of these holes even. So it's about picking your landing zones and playing it from there. Hole four, tricky. You can see James off that center tree. Uh, one of many. This one's a baby flex off the tee. Uh, you wanted to draw back a little bit by the end of the flight, but really this oh, one's a... Oh, oh what gosh. a throw. You can see we're playing to the B uh, position here, which perfect. is that gentle fade back to the left uh, after you make that gap. That's such a good shot from Juliana. Yeah, and that's a little bit of what you were saying just a minute ago about if, it's, if it starts on any angle, it will hold that. You know, she got a little over it there, and it stayed over it. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, this is danger. That's heading pretty far left. You can get up and down from over there, though. We'll see. Derek hit. Oh, see, those halos are still holding up oh, pretty good, though. Oh, nice lucky little. Lucky boy. Somebody's yeah. living right. James, just pitch this thing up. Don't get too crazy. Oh, he's getting crazy. Oh, not <laughs> too shabby. <laughs> that was yeah. a good bid. Similar to the drive, a little over on the angle, and it's just not going to fade. It's not a traditional putter. Nick now from, what, eight or nine's fairway, basically, all the way after the left. Yeah, different hole. He's shooting back to this hole, and... That's a good shot. Man, course is looking a little shaggy in these videos. This is uh, some months ago at this point, and it's funny to just see the course wax and wane through its like growth cycles. And you go back and watch old safari footage and compare it to now, and you know that's been all over the year as well. It's this course does transform a lot throughout the year. Totally, there's dry periods, there's mm -hmm. wet periods. You know, there's uh, skip season, there's stick season. Yep, there's sometimes lakes on this hole. Yep. Um, Derek plays the hole nicely there for a three. Nick gets up and down for his three. Juliana still yet to putt. You see that beautiful pinky there sitting. Is that a legitimate marker? That's my question. Like, what is the, is it, does the marker need to be bigger on the Yeah, pads? we're going to take that up in committee this year. You know, it's, okay. Owen is really pushing the rules there, and I'm not crazy about it, but, you know, we will let it fly. And that's something Owen's known for. She's a rule pusher. She's a bad seed. She's a bad apple. A Everyone habitual knows line that. crosser. Line stepper, line crosser. Everyone knows it on tour, and it <laughs> steers clear. Juliana, after the beautiful birdie, we're kind of ragging on Owen there a little bit, but shouldn't. Oh, no. Ugh, so that, that's brutal. That is that walking path from hole three. We saw it, saw her get a little close on hole three, but it does end up finding in hole five. This is Murderer's Row. This is the beginning. Oh, Jimmy. Jeez. Come on. It's actually a great second tree. To Honestly, save. sets him up on that kind of like an alt tee pad off to the left there, but he's got a good 350 to go, 340 to go through a tough line. Oh, Owen does it again, but this time it does reduce the angle through the flight. I like that, though. She's kind of learning off the fact that the disc does not like to go left, so she'll play that left to right line. Yeah, and this basket, oh, this Dicky. basket position is in B, which is, again... On any given day with a driver or a mid-range, you're loving a two or a three. So with a pole cat, if you can get a three, oh that's God, great. Loving a two. I, I don't even dream of a two on this one. I just throw a buzz up the middle. It's just not even I funny. actually don't play for a birdie <laughs> here either, but that's more about me and my issues. Nick trying to get up and down from Look at this out. is a pump, though. Yeah, it's at least 300. Get up. Oh, Joe Donahue built that yeah. recently, and that just prevented Nick from... I blame Joe for that. Personally. Yeah, I don't like it. I don't care for it. Drifting. Drifting. Hole three all over. No. Did it slide down in there? I think it might have. I think maybe the last tree saved him from an OB stroke. Oh, okay. Well, you're lucky, James. Juliana trying to pitch up for the 4P. 
leaves it short. That's going to be a 45 foot putt. So tough to navigate. OB right next to the basket on this one. You'll notice as we get a little bit closer in uh, to the green here, but it's just so touchy. Yeah, I mean, this is how you play the hole. Again, 200, 100, putt. Perfect little drift. Is that? Oh, Derek. Right on it. So is that Derek looking to go? Is he uh, going G-Star? I. Uh, that's a good question. Is he rotating? I don't. Uh, God, another thing to take up with the rules committee. Did he cheat in the middle of the round yeah, on we'll get... camera? <laughs> oh, good Brock. putt. Good putt toward the OB. That's a risky putt. Mm -hmm. Oof. Good effort there. Going for it as well, though. Yeah. I mean, really, the, the, there is a small bounty that Harper has put up on par through five, six, and seven, uh, all set up in their most, or close to most difficult positions. Nick, just a little bit off today. Yeah, a little off on the putt. He's driving well. That's a better looking putt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, five, six, seven is definitely sort of aim in corner with a pole cat at least. Uh, they're in long positions, mm -hmm. very tough to two or three, really. Yeah, it's kind of funny when you're throwing the pole cat, like, and I'll say everyone but James, when they're throwing the pole cat, you know, hole five, par four, you know, right. hole six on the pyramid, that's, that, nobody's doing that. So it kind of turns this course from a par 54 to like a par 60 to a degree, which is, yeah. you know, kind of refreshing, especially being in the Bay Area, not many, uh, not many things that you're like playing for placement off the tee on. Yeah, I mean, Derek here has played the hole perfectly, as did Owen. <laughs> What a gentleman. Communal marking. What a gentleman. Yeah, I noticed James didn't even mark there. Another thing we'll have to take up. That's a pretty throw. All you need here, this is this is a long throw. All you need is to land up there about 250, 260, and then pitch down for your three. This is absolutely a par four with a pull cap. Another good one. Oh my god, it's a rope. Derek could take that day to day with this driver. Just want to thank James for dressing up so nicely, you know, really bringing out the formal attire, PJ pants and a hoodie. He said uh, his fiance Emily, was griefing him relentlessly for the pants. He had bought them recently, but on the way to Polecat Worlds, he stopped in a Starbucks and had a very nice couple pay him a compliment on him. So he says worth it. Oh, well, if a couple is paying you a compliment, well, far be it from me to ask a man to show up, you know, dressed like in a normal some real human. clothes, yeah. like an adult. <laughs> I didn't know there was anonymous couple at Starbucks involved. Mm -hmm. So this one is on that pyramid. Uh, this is the Patrick Brown, like, especial. He was the one responsible for installing this. There's a V-pin, and then he extended it maybe 30, 40 feet down into this little gully, built up the pyramid. I call it the AM killer. I've seen really, like, the lowest the lowest point of multiple players' disc golf career <laughs> come on this hole. I've witnessed it. So, uh, you know, this can be tough, especially with a pole cat where – you know, our players aren't the most comfortable putting. Yeah, this is, like I said, a par four. That's a really good play. You know, she lands in the circle, essentially. You're putting up about 10 feet uh, to an elevated basket. Legend has it that two absolute physical freaks have actually aced this hole in normal play with drivers. No, uh, one, I, I hear what you're saying, but I feel like it was one driver, one mid-range. And the mid-range was a literal child, right? Well, again, we're not going to ask who did it or how they did it or how incredibly impressive it was to do it. You know, it's just, I just know that two people have confirmed ace this position. Only two. Ever. Ever. And probably it'll stay that way, but we're not sure. Yeah. Well, it was one and then it became two. It was one and that one was really special. Uh, not special enough though. I mean, well, the literal child made it two and kind of took some of the shine off of it, but we're okay with that. All right. Back to the program and enough waxing yeah, about Harper's. I don't know may or may not alleged I don't know glorious. why we got distracted there about acing 60, but we did. It's hard not to, honestly. It's just it's an such achievement. an incredible shot. You know, it's something that you can look back on the rest of your life and say, wow, that was the pinnacle. Like, yeah. You're... Of all my accomplishments, and there weren't many, Well, that I mean, was the top. There were some. There were some accomplishments. Yeah. Several. I mean, yeah, you won a championship, right, in the Golden Gate Weekly? Uh, I've won three. Thank you. Okay. One ace, though. Ooh, Get in there. Putt, Juliana. 
yeah. So, yeah, back to the action here. They all more or less played the hole perfectly. They're all putting in for threes, which feel absolutely like you've played the hole perfectly. I kind of like how we've put these logs up. Uh, you know, they can get tricky on the footing if you get down there in a weird spot, but it gives it a fun little, like, island. It's just a yeah. nice aesthetic, you know? Island aesthetic. It's not OB, nothing like that. It but... makes it feel and look like a green. And if you hit those logs in the wrong way, you can roll yes. 60 feet uh, the wrong direction. Now moving on to hole seven, it is in the C position, which is uh, really going to be like a really tall, drifty left to right shot with a pole cat. But I just, it it seems like such a hope and a prayer to birdie it. I think a lot of these players are just going to be throwing pretty much what Derek did there. Yeah, you want to crest that ridge and then you're looking down at it. But yeah, in, in normal times, this is a full on driver shot for most people. Not this long legged hey, freak. Gonna... Hey, he got around it. Oh, right. I mean, that's insane so nice that that big uh tree blocker or uh you know construction construct that we have constructed uh inspired by day law when a couple of their trees came down but it's really the main thing to navigate on a hole like this i mean to clear that tree protector with a putter this slow <laughs> this you have to be insane. such a skilled and powerful thrower and uh i mean nick clearly is he, there's a reason that he's a uh, a world champ here That's a great spot. You'll work with something from there. Yeah, nice spot. Might have a little bit of trickery around that, but you know, you're playing for three anyway. Oh, <gasps> left it low and angled. I mean, the irony is from where she's throwing and where Derek and Juliana are throwing from, that is a perfect pole catch shot. This is what it's made for. Oh, no fun. It's made for these 130 foot layups. I like that keyhole look there. I know. It's kind of fun, right? That that little tree, it, those two trees falling has made a uh, fun little, you know, aesthetic down there. I mean, you have to make a choice, right? Is Like, Juliana's mm -hmm. choosing there. Am I going over this horizontal mm -hmm. branch or under it? You definitely have to choose. Nick now for the great birdie. Ooh, going for it. Fade in. Oh. It's so hard to drop him in from long with these polecats. You're really just floating it up, and hopefully yeah. it works out. James from about 45. Good putt, though. Gave it the juice. I mean, James wants this. He came in, you know, on an absolute heater of a season. Top five player in the world at this point, as far as, oh, almost puts it in, Julian, as far as tour points go. Uh, but hadn't quite locked in that big win. So you know he's hungry with stakes like uh, this. You know, it's hard to, uh, hard to fault him. Yeah, I mean, people are saying around the grounds that this was like actually the biggest tournament James will play all year. Um, and it's hard to disagree. He mentioned multiple times. Oh, oh no! What did she do? Oh! oh no. Now committee. We have a committee member. One of seventeen committee members. I am here with Harper, and, and uh, they're gonna have to. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. Let, let me do it again. Let me do it again. Okay. All right. There we go. She gets into compliance just yes, in time before huge. the next putt. An auditor was coming on the next hole, so that yeah. was massive to finish up correctly. Yeah, committee didn't care for that, but ultimately I think the commissioner is going to let it go. It's lucky to be nice, you know what I mean? More tap-ins. Again, this is one where if you get the three, you've played the whole right. Exactly. Like we said, you know, the amen corner, go 3-3-3 three, 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 and you're all good. Uh, I don't think any of our players did, though, unfortunately. Yeah, I see a bunch of red there. Everybody went one or two over on those holes. Hole eight playing to the original B pin. Um, one of my favorite holes and shots on the course really. Oh no, yeah, for the original B. It's really that like high drifter shot. James is gonna be, ah man, tricky. He's got long legs, so we'll see what it looks like, but it's not generally where you wanna be. Yeah, now we're out of aim in corner and we're back to shots that you can really shape with a polecat. This is a, a good disc actually for this position gonna play the angle a little bit he'll have a putt yeah if you can if you can uh, land within those peeler cores the path there it generally gives you a little anti-skip right into the basket so Ooh, yep barely off those trees let's see let's see if we can get a big neg yeah she'll have a putt it's a little bit of a scary fall away putt behind it it's tough to just like mash on these things man they're catch discs and you're trying to give it like a full x step yeah Derek's doing Derek things, getting 
respectful Ooh. threes. That's a good throw. These discs do still have some fade on them. I'm surprised. You know, they've whacked a few trees and they mm -hmm. still are staying stable eight holes in. This is a tough one to actually get aggressive on. You see the green falling away there. We've built up these uh, little, uh, you know, erosion control walls, but still it falls right into a tree line, and that tree line is... Ooh. <laughs> oh, no. Such a gutsy putt. I love it. Yeah, you'll see the damage. Oh, oh, oh no, 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 no. Okay, I said you'll see the damage. We've seen the damage. Yeah. Popping right into the hobbit hole. It's going to be a brutal comebacker. Man, that's three or four just almost putts for Nick. Juliana's putting well today. She's just been a little bit low. Ooh, good view, though. Mm. Yeah, I actually like how her putt is looking on, you know, five, six, seven, eight, but uh, just inches off on each yeah, one. Yeah, a little more gusto, but shaped up right. Here's James. God, has to go sidearm at the pole cat. Oh, money. Ching. Look at the camouflage there. The PJ pants blending into the bush. No one could see him. Yeah, what legs? <laughs> him and Owen took a while kind of talking that one through. Go left, go right, figured out. Worked out well. Good putt. Yeah, James, really the hometown hero uh, as far as elite players here at Golden Gate Park. He grew up 45 minutes north. He knows this course like the back of his hand. He plays our weekly regularly. Uh, he's already signed up for the bag tag challenge coming up in January. So it feels like the hometown kid, albeit he's a UFO and we're, you know, yeah, you know, enemies. But it also feels like he's really starting to lean into his sort of uh, cocky heel persona this year. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I love to see that. Uh, but he does bring that you know, sort of trash talking persona out to Golden Gate Park more and more these days. It is. And I, so we're playing hole C. Nice little uh, stall shot into a hyzer. You'll see these players throwing. But yep. it's actually a beautiful dichotomy because he's like a genuinely nice person, works with, you know, children with special needs, one of the most respectful people you'll ever meet. But man, does he grief everyone relentlessly. <laughs> so uh, you got to like it. This one's a tough polecat shot, Harper. Yeah, I mean, that's a good example. Nick's shot was really nice there. They, You need to finish left here, which is tougher and tougher with any polecat, but especially as the round goes on. These guys are making it look This good, is a though. great shot. You have to throw it really tall because oh, yeah. there's not much left finish with these, so you really need the height for that to work out. But then you also have to really kind of pound on it because you need distance. Another good one. It's going to stand up a little bit. Ooh. I mean, those are great drives, honestly. She might be a little bit off there, but James to be putting tester, here is though. good. Yeah, he's starting to heat up. Jeez, Louise. Starting to heat up. This is hole nine, so we are at the turn. Tournament Central is about 100 feet to your right, so a bit of a gallery here usually. Mm. Good effort. This is a textbook own putt. Can she drive it home? Uh, I'm just like genuinely. I'm not used to seeing Owen not make this. That there is go, a Derek. textbook Derek putt. The deep hyzer angle, right in the heart. Derek, owner of one of the most tragic spitouts I've or cut throughs, frankly, that <laughs> I've ever seen. Yeah. Uh, back in the old Mach three days, hole two of a, I believe a playoff. It was for a the playoff safari for spot. Safari. Yep. Yeah, pretty tragic stuff, but he's come back. Yeah, he had to go away. He went on sabbatical for four or five years. He went to India. He went to Nepal. But yeah, he, he found is back. himself. He found himself. He found a new self, a new Derek. That, same putt, uh, though. Same putt. Super dangerous. Prone to cut through any given moment. But, you know, a, more a kinder, wiser Derek. Exactly. Uh, we'll see if he can take that wisdom onto the back nine. But for now, it is going to finish the first nine holes of golf. And... You know, we've, saw, we've seen some fantastic play, some bogeys, but some great birdies. You see Proctor leading the pack on our feature card with three under par. Uh, Nick Hansen with that one down and the rest shortly or, uh, trailing not too far behind. Uh, that is going to do it for our first nine holes. This crazy Carl the Fog uh, time lapse is going to trail us out. But again, that is it for the first nine holes. Thank you so much for watching and please tune in for part two.